Go. This is Russell J. Hawley from the Tate Geological Museum here at Casper College. And today I'm going to be talking to you about crinoids. Now, if you've uh, never heard of a crinoid, uh, don't feel bad. Uh, they're not found in Wyoming today. And uh, even if you live by the sea, you might have never seen one because they uh, generally live in very deep water. There's two major groups of crinoids. There's the free-living feather stars, which clamber and swim around in tropical reef areas. But the stocked crinoids live only in deep water generally about 200 meters or more down, and uh, you can go your whole life without ever seeing one. Um, the two crinoid models that uh, I've got here, uh, built by Shaley George, thank you Shaley, um, belong to the stalked group. And although they look like flowers, they were animals. In life, these feather-like arms collect bits of food out of the seawater and funnel it in to a central mouth. And then there's a stem made out of lots of little segments called columnals, stacked one on top of another like a roll of lifesavers. After the crinoid died, those stems would come apart and those columnals would get scattered and buried and eventually fossilized. Now, Paleozoic crinoids, for the most part, have round columnals. Um, you can see them on this model here. And when you find them as fossils, they look almost exactly like little petrified poker chips. Here in Wyoming, you can find quite a few of them up at uh, Anchor Dam in the uh, northwestern part of the state. However, in many other parts of Wyoming, uh, including Sundance, uh, Medicine Bow, and Alcova, the rocks uh, that bear the crinoid fossils are late Jurassic in age. And the most abundant crinoid at that time was um, Pentacrinites, which had star-shaped sections, star-shaped columnals. Here's what they would have looked like in life, assembled on the intact crinoid. But once the crinoid died and fell apart, those columnals would be scattered about, each one looking like a little individual star. The fellow who donated this specimen to us called it the Milky Way because it has this spray of stars going across. A lot of people ask what those stars come from, and they are crinoid stem segments. Uh, you can be forgiven for not guessing that they come from a flower-shaped animal. Incidentally, when these weather out and they're lying loose on the ground, ants like to collect them. They'll pick them up and carry them back to their anthills. And so if you're lucky and you're in an area where the Sundance formation is exposed, you'll sometimes find an anthill that looks like a pile of Lucky Charms with little stars all over it. So keep your eyes open. I can't walk by an anthill without pulling out my magnifying glass.